Welcome to the shop. I modeled up and 3D printed five different metal fabrication tools. I'm testing out some concepts, different materials, and also a new machine. It's the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and in full disclosure, they sent it out to use on projects in the channel. And this is the first printer out of the three that I've had that the hassle factor is low enough that it seems to be worthwhile like I can use it as part of the regular workflow. Now the first tool we're looking at is a throwback to about three years ago. I had this on the channel. It's these 3D printed coping jigs for round tubing. Whenever you're working on a round tubing project, you need to join the tubing together. And in order to do that, you need to cut one end to a very specific shape. Now you can use a notcher like this, but I usually get a pretty rough result and it comes out much better when I cope it by hand. So these little jigs allow me to put the mark in and I wrote some code to make them really quickly. You can copy it into an online CAD called OpenJSCAD and it'll automatically generate your model. You can just put in the diameters of your tubing, wall thicknesses, the angle between them, and it'll create a model. So I'll link this in the description so you can make these yourself and just download it and you're off to the printer. When you look at this, it automatically levels the bed and look in real time how much faster this is than a lot of printers. I mean, it's much faster than any printer I've had, so I'm pretty pumped about it. It was just under an hour to print this set of four uh, jigs that I can use to mark one inch tubing at uh, some pretty common angles. So I just slide them over the tubing like this. I can mark it out. And then when I've done this in the past, I normally use a cutoff wheel or a bandsaw to get a rough cut on it. And then I'll use an angle grinder or my belt grinder here to uh, finish up the outsides and a carbide burr on a die grinder for the insides. And it goes pretty fast and you get a really nice result. Now the better you notch this, the better your welding is going to go. And so it's, it's worth spending a little bit of time here so that when it comes to welding it, it'll go well. This got me thinking about square tubing and I can just use a chop saw here in my shop to get a good cut on square tubing. But when I'm on the go using a cutoff wheel, mine always get kind of out of whack unless I mark all four sides like this and cut each one individually with the cutoff wheel. So that's what I do. And I thought it'd be a lot faster if I just had something like this I could slide over the end. So I modeled one up and tried that out too. So these came out pretty quickly, a couple different sizes. I can use one end for straight cuts, one end for 45s, and that's good enough for most of my square tubing stuff. I'm really excited to try out the next one. It's a forming tool that's 3D printed, and so it has to have some actual strength to it. And I have dimple dies like this that are made out of high strength steel uh, to be able to put a little flare on some round holes. But what if you want to have an odd shaped hole? So I designed up these for a square hole with a little fillet in the corner and I put an inner wall on it because I thought that would give it a little bit of extra strength. Now I wanted these to be strong so I'm trying this higher strength carbon fiber reinforced material. This is supposed to be like good for tooling and it has a really interesting texture to it. It's awesome how easy it is to load these materials. You know, with my other printers, I have to push them through a tube and then like purge it out the nozzle and stuff. It does all that for you, cleans the nozzle the whole deal, and it even can figure out what uh, material you're using if you're using theirs. So I added a little extra thickness to the walls and some extra infill. So this took a couple hours to print, but it came out really nice. Now I didn't leave a ton of clearance and I must've had a little bit of uh, shrinkage on it or something cause it's, it's kind of a tight fit. So I just used some sandpaper to take a thow or two off the outside and then it fit together just fine. I'm gonna use my dimple die press that I built on the channel last year. And this has been a really uh, nice press for a lot of things. I made some little test plates just on the plasma table to see how they'd work. So I put the punch through and the die on the back side and I can press it down here. And this is the moment of truth. I was pretty nervous. I thought I'd have to make a couple revisions of this, but uh, overall it's going pretty well. You could see it curl up a little. I get that with all my dimple dies and then it flattens out. And we'll take a look and see how it turned out. And that is pretty nice. And I think I could make these in a lot of different shapes and that could be a cool addition to a project. So I'm glad to know I can do that. This is 18 gauge steel, by the way. So it's not super thick, but uh, fairly substantial. 
and the die looks just fine and the punch itself if you look at it there's a little line there where that hole sat but it didn't delaminate nothing came apart and it could definitely be used several more times so i was happy with how that came out let's just take one more look at that dimple and that is pretty cool next one may be my most common use for this and it's custom vice jaws. See, a lot of times I wanna hold an odd shape and I don't wanna grab it with the jaws of my vice and mar it up. So I'm gonna try this out, uh, making some custom jaws for this round tubing out of some higher strength material. So I'm removing the jaws off of my bench vise to reverse engineer them. I could use a mill vise as well, uh, and that's what I'm excited about. Now, if you are measuring between two holes, here's a trick. Just zero out your calipers at the diameter of one of the holes, as long as they're the same diameter. And then you can go from outside to outside, and it'll automatically subtract the one hole diameter, and that'll give you a good idea of center to center spacing, good enough for most things. So it only took a couple minutes to model this up and it printed in a little less than an hour once again. And I had a little bit of a raft to remove, but after that, the uh, print turned out great. And it looks like a good fit on this tubing. So let's go ahead and install it and see if this can hold up to the clamping. Now, I wasn't sure if I'd need this high strength material, but I'd loaded it anyway, so I figured we'd give it a try and it clamped in there really nice so i'm able to lock down on it pretty hard and it grabs it so i wanted to really push it and clamp down as tight as i could without crushing this tubing so i'm pulling pretty hard on that and these are holding up i don't hear any crackling or popping or anything let's take a look at them and i don't see indications of damage or, or problems with them anywhere so i think they could continue to be used uh, just like that the next one I wanted a tool to help out with getting the right clocking orientation of round tubing to put notches and bends in. Let's take another look at the vintage cart frame. So see that bend at the back, it sits in a certain plane and these bends here are 45 degrees to that and then I need to go 90 degrees for that notch. So to be able to get that clocking all the way around the tubing, you need a reference line and you can use the seam weld if it's seam welded tubing or if you're working with DOM or you want a nicer line, just throw a piece of angle iron on and draw a line on it and so then you have a reference line. But the challenge is finding how far around the tubing you are from that reference line and there are a few ways that I have to do it but I wanted something simple so I came up with this little puck that had little degree marks on it and I thought this might be pretty nice I could just slide it over and do that so I had it change materials automatically at the top to give a good visual of the degree lines and I can slide it over and I guess that could work but sliding it over the end trying to see those I just put that one away where it goes and start it over again. Here we go, I think halfway around is gonna be a lot better and fewer degree marks. Look how fast it goes. I mean, watch one full layer here. This is all that it takes. I just, I don't know, I thought it was pretty fun to watch that. So this build was really fast and I think this is gonna work okay to give a pretty good idea of where I'm gonna be at 45, 90 degrees, some angles in between. So I can just line up that 90 degree mark right there, make a notch or a mark right on the end, and that should be approximately 90 degrees. Again, there are more accurate ways to do this, but I wanted something quick that I can use for just regular jobs when it doesn't have to be perfect. I think one of the best uses of 3D printed custom parts is for organization and workflow stuff. So I wanted to try that out and make a little organizer for my most commonly used TIG welding consumables. I have an unbelievable amount of TIG welding consumables, but these four cover most jobs that I do, probably 90%, so it'd be nice to have them handy. So I modeled up a little tray right here, and I put some pockets in the back that I can put magnets on, so this can just sit right on the side of my machine. I decided to print this out of polycarbonate, not that it needs to be, but I wanted to try that material. And it's amazing to me that all these different materials work so easily without any effort or messing around on my part. And everything fit in there just fine. I mean, the dimensional accuracy on these prints has been really good. I did a couple caliper checks and the PLA was right on the money. The others were pretty close. And I'm gonna use a little bit of super glue for insurance here, even though I made those magnets a tight fit. So I'll press those in there 
and this thing can go right on and everything will be close at hand. So that's gonna be really handy and I can think of some other uses like this. Well, I'm pretty excited to have this capability to be able to make some different things and I have a ton of ideas running through my head but I'd love to know what you think. Uh, if you have some different 3D printed tools or some ideas for some, leave me a comment. And if you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. See you next time.